Hello? Anyone there? I need a bit of advice. Oh, there you are. How convenient. You see, in three months from now, I will become a father for the first time. Panic. So what is, in your opinion, the most important quality that I could possibly teach to that child? Anyone? Be bold. Be nice. To be nice. To be good. To be good. Wow. This is deep. I gotta take notes. To be good. Did you all get it? Get a pen and paper. To be good. You just made me a good father, did you know that? Oh, and my apologies for forgetting to introduce myself in all this hassle. My name is Ben David Norman, and I currently teach astronomy at the University of Stavanger, where I also did my PhD in mathematical cosmology. Plain language, I'm a scientist, trying to understand the universe at large through mathematics. Now, the dominating theory in my field today is the so-called uh, Big Bang Theory, which you may have heard of, I reckon. Did you know, however, that this theory was first pro proposed by a priest, Lemaitre? And for that reason, I mean, come on, a priest suggesting a universe as a beginning sounds almost like the Bible. Even Einstein had troubles accepting that new paradigm at first. But science proved the priest right. Today we have come to accept that indeed the universe does seem to have a beginning. Now, uh, Modern cosmologists like uh, Krauss and Hawking and others will call this uh, beginning nothing, sheer nothingness. But that's as absurd as it sounds, of course. Nothing comes from nothing. So scientifically speaking, it is a vacuum. Now, an enormous event 14 billion years ago, transformed this vacuum into time and space and energy, and then stars and, and galaxies and, and the black holes and whatnot. And according to the biologists, eventually life. Humans, us. Humanity from vacuum. So from vacuum then, void to any personal characteristics whatsoever, comes everything that I so, and we all, so highly esteem today and value today, like, like love and, and, and purpose and worth. And more importantly, ketchup and humor. Morals, your piece of advice. My son from vacuum. This, uh, this is me as a child, anyway. And if I were to sum any child's facial expression up in one word, I would choose the word all. We were all born crying chunks of meat, tears and diapers, but with an enormous potential for discovering reality. From that first sound registered in my brain while still in my mother's womb, to the overwhelming chaos of colors and objects as I opened my eyes to gaze at reality for the first time, that first grip of my fingers around my mother's, I begin discovering that I am a person. What is this place? 
the mystery of language as I mumble ma, 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 for the first time and the world responds to me through laughter, smiles. Then I uh, learn to walk, I learn to talk, I uh, learn to lie. And eventually, you went off to school, and at some point, that very first kiss that made you feel like nothing at all that happened in the universe up until that point. Do you all remember you discovering reality? Or we still had all. But then uh, something may have happened to all. Adulthood, for instance. And that may look very nasty, as in this scientific paper, where science has happened to all, and this has become that, a mere definition. Oh, it's an emotional response to perceptual event stimuli that transcend current frames of reference. I hardly understand what that means, but I know one thing, that's not all. This is all. Besides, the paper concludes that all essentially makes you a better person. Yet, did we keep it? The all. We grew up, didn't we? We got it all figured out. We ceased to ask that why question radiating from every child's face, uh, what is reality? We ceased to ask, yeah, do we know the answer? Pilate once asked Jesus, what is reality? Or as he put it 2,000 years ago, what is truth? Now, he didn't ask in order to find out. He asked in order to hide his own ignorance and to justify it. But why be content with ignorance if reality is out there to be found? Shouldn't we constantly revise our own ideas and paradigms to see if there is something that we have possibly missed out there? What is reality to be afraid of? Must we never kill that inner child of ours, baby in cradle? How fragile is existence on the inhabitable surface of the earth, thin as the skin on an apple. There it plays with its rattle, there it is being loved. Glowing hot plasma under his feet and freezing empty space above it. How delicate the balance needed to sustain life, made possible only because of Earth's perfect positioning in his orbit around a giant fireball, the sun. And the sun is just one out of our staggering hundred billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. And that galaxy is just one out of an estimated 2,000 billion galaxies in the visible universe. What are the invisible? And the visible with the invisible together comprises one universe in a spectacular fabric hypothesized to exist. The multiverse fabric. Despair, folks. Despair. Emanating from a brute sense of loss in value as we zoom out magnitude by magnitude until the universe and multiverse and whatnot has become so spectacularly overwhelming in size that the infinitesimal child totally disappears in the vastness, lost in space. We are brutally forced to consider our own insignificance. How can we possibly matter? Clotted vacuum as we are. Our own science laughs back at us, screaming, you're nothing but clotted vacuum. My son, I lose him to the vastness of space. My scientific knowledge causes me to, even before he's born. He's nothing. Yet, I would easily trade a billion universes for that child, to me. It only takes one child to give the entire universe significance. How come? Why? The mind. First of all, because it is a mind. Somehow, one kilogram of brain mass facilitates awareness, not only of his father, but of the entire and the vastness of the entire universe. And as such, the capacities of the human mind are more than the physical 
universe. It only takes one mind to give the entire multiverse significance. A question. Did we miss something in science? Do you feel it? I'm trying to give you that all back, you see. That must be my gift for the piece of advice you all provided me with in Italy. For we tend to lose the, the awe, don't we, as we grow up, as we acquire a state of the paradigm knowledge. For we have come so far, we have understood so much, we have, as a species, grown so old. So old, indeed, that modern cosmologists will tell you that we are on the wedge of discovering nothing less than a theory of everything. Everything. Me? I don't even understand the baby and the multiverse. I mean, mind in matter. So I go, really? Everything? You see, 400 years ago now, winds of change swept over the human intellect, causing Descartes and others to formulate the mechanistic, or if you like, the modern scientific worldview of today's generation. Now, this idea had stunning success and helped us clear the waters, murky as they were, with all sorts of superstition and gods of the gaps, resulting instead in an incredible, crisp understanding of what we now know to be the physical universe. But is it thinkable that we have thrown the baby out with the murky bathwater? That somehow the physical is not sufficient in, for instance, explaining a the mind. I don't care about the brain. Who can teach me of the mind? That center where contemplation of the vastness of the entire universe happens. Awareness of the vacuum from which we once were formed. The seat of love, the center of the will, the mind, you. Do I uh, think because uh, neurons fire in my brain? Or, or do neurons fire in my brain because I think? We haven't solved that puzzle, have we? We just don't address it. How could we? It stretches outside our paradigm. So we silence it. Shh. 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 Do, do I hear winds to change? Winds to change, gently breezing in the trees? Winds to change, so often opposed by the masters of the current paradigms. You see, the Mesopotamian paradigm, astrology, lasted for thousands of years until it was eventually overtaken by Greek natural philosophy, lasting another millennium well above that until Copernicus came and revolutionized science, paving the way for the mechanistic world of Descartes and the subsequent Newtonian clockwork paradigm of classical physics. Later came Einstein and gave us a new understanding of space and time, and then came quantum mechanics and shattered the grounds of classical mechanics. Then the priest discovered the beginning. Do you see? New ideas, paradigm shifts all the way down. People will laugh. They will resist. But in the end, even a priest was proven right. Brilliant ideas and mostly wrong, or at least incomplete. But now, Finally, at last, here are we, on the wedge to discovering a theory of everything. Oh, what a bliss to be alive. We are here. Yeah? And I think somebody is once again on, on the wedge of confusing current paradigm with reality. Thank you once again, though, for providing me with excellent advice. Suppose, in ending, that my son grows old enough to ask me a very simple question. Dad, why? Why did you teach me to do good? Oh, that one. Oh, well, because I was uh, so advised at a TED Talk now uh, 15 years ago. But seriously, from the naturalistic world of today's generation, my answer would be as simple as it is unsatisfactory, son. I couldn't derive that from the laws of physics. Should we do good? 
were a profoundly important question to answer, yet me, I couldn't derive the answer from science. So to where do we turn for answers to my son? That, my ladies and gentlemen, was a brute taste of childhood. A glimpse of an ancient giant. What is reality? I'll leave you all with it. Oh, and remember my gift, the awe. You'll need it. Thanks once again. <laughs>